Hey guys, welcome to Zero Skills Tech. Today I'm going to show you how to shuck a Western Digital Easy Store. As you can see, I already shucked this one, and I honestly thought it'd be pretty difficult, but I actually did this in less than five to ten minutes from opening the package. It might take me a little bit longer to explain to you while I'm doing it, but all you need is a Phillips a T10 screw set, star hex set, whatever that you want to call it. Um, if you have guitar picks like these, that's perfectly fine. And if you have like a pry tool like this, but a flathead will work just fine. Um, you can substitute this with a flathead or and these for credit cards. Um, and honestly, it, it's pretty straightforward from once I get to start showing you. So you can see over here, everything is disassembled. Uh, this is a Western Digital, let's see here, WD10 EMAZ, 256 meg cash. It's apparently a red, but just labeled as a white. I'll be using this for one of my Dell um, T320 servers. I got the caddies and everything right here, and I might go into depth about what I'm doing with that later. But um, let me show you how to shut this video in less than, sorry, shut this drive in about, meh, what is it, one minute in? I'll do it in five. So from start to finish, literally just, I don't have any scissors, so I'm just gonna pop that open. Um, you may want to check if the drive is functioning first before you do that. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. I'm pretty sure they're functioning, otherwise I'll just turn it to Best Buy or something. But pretty straightforward. Um, I can actually, I didn't. I just came here for the flash drive, so the video is over. But uh, really, though, you just take the drive out of the box, obviously, stack up. And here's what you need to do. On the back end where the power and everything is, you take credit cards or whatever you want to use as a, um, uh, basically a way to pry the casing open or just make it a true, a smooth transition. You want to put them in as far as you can, but not too far without getting them lost. There should be six points that you can do it in. So if you can do it like that, here I'll show you once I put them in. Um, it's not necessary as long as the casing itself is kind of separated from the um, from the shell. Guitar picks work best, but these aren't guitar these aren't full guitar picks like flat. So really, as long as there's a gap between the casing and the um, sorry, as long as there's a gap between the casing and the main shell itself, this will work. Um, just kind of slide it around until you find, there we go, a way in on one of the sides. And once you do, um, just put a guitar pick, preferably a guitar pick if you have a credit card or something like that that you don't want, don't want to use. But as long as there's a wedge between the shell, the main shell, and the um, casing, you're good. So you just need those six points. So if you guys can't see, those six points right there. And I would start from the top that you can tell it's the top because the bottom has a serial number and everything in the footing. So try to start from the top or wherever you really prefer. It, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter, but you will start in the middle right here and kind of just put it in and then kind of wiggle it around. Now, if it doesn't come loose on this side, that's fine. Just flip it over. Try the other side until you get something to click on one of them. Uh, I will try the bottom end now. Don't don't be too forceful with it. It should just click and your flathead should just slide right through once you get in. So kind of wiggle it around a little bit. And you know, push back if you can. And just keep trying to push your way down and wiggle back and forth between the bottom. And then flip it back over. So try it on the other side. And you should notice that now, because I unlocked the bottom one a little bit, I can actually slide this all the way in before I could do that. So just once you're in a little bit further, just kind of twist it just a little bit and you should notice things start falling out, which is good because that's a sign that the casing is loose. And then just keep flipping it back and over until you can actually slide the whole thing out. Now you see that this casing just came apart. So at this point, you can just using the twisting motion to kind of push the case back. And if you do a good job, everything should just come apart. 
So this part you kind of just take your hands and kind of just slide everything out. And once it's out, boom, you got one 10 terabyte or whatever drive, eight terabyte, whatever you got. Um, Western Digital Drive. And next part, pretty straightforward. Just lift. Don't be afraid of something snaps. That just, it's actually quite normal. And then this is where your Phillips comes in. You need to take this one out that holds the logic board to control the hard drive. If you're wondering if you can reuse this to put like a different hard drive, no. And apparently there's a chip on it that basically locks it to the firmware for the drive and you cannot use it with any other drive. Uh, I don't know what this does, but you can actually just kind of wiggle it out this way and kind of just twist and lift kind of thing or just rotate till it kind of comes out and put it off to the side. Once the screw is out right here, all you got to do is just whoop, yank it and that's it. You got one separated logic board and take off the rubber feeding for anti-vibration dampening, whatever you want to call it. And take your T10 screw and then unscrew the side mounts. And there you go. In less than probably 10 minutes, you could probably shuck two 10 terabyte Western Digital Drives. Um, what, any comments about this? Uh, not really, just be careful about um, prying it open. Don't be too forceful. If you can get a hold of one of these flatheads, like these little pry tools, but a flathead should work just fine, or a butter knife really should be a good substitute for that as well. And then, if you don't have guitar picks, credit cards work just fine. Three of them in those three places I told you. Um, you should have one when it's in the casing, one here, here, and here. And then one here, here, and here. You can see the tabs where I actually placed them. So there should be, three would do, two should be fine as well. Um, but that's not an issue. The reason you want to save these is for warranty purposes. A lot of people say, well, these will never fail or whatever, but you never know. And if honestly, if you don't want to keep like 15, 20 different like drives laying around of shells, just chuck one, keep one, chuck or and toss the rest because I'm pretty sure these are not um, like serial bound, meaning you can actually just use these boards with any one as long as it's a Western Digital 10 terabyte. And worst case scenario, you just send it back and Western Digital don't care anyways because half the time they don't even look at their warranty um, and they just replace it. But other than that, yeah, that's how you shuck literally 20 terabytes. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, if you want me to try something else, just uh, shoot me a comment or send me a message. I'll be more than happy to look at it. But yeah, here we go. That's it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys.